After about 12 months of holding rates steady at 5.25 to 5.5%, the Federal Reserve announced today that they have decided to officially cut interest rates. This, of course, comes after positive data around inflation in the past few months that it's cooling and returning closer to the baseline 2% inflation target that the Fed loves to see. Last week's inflation report, for example, stated that the CPI in August only rose 2.5%, which was the lowest reading since February of 2021. The cutting of interest rates is also a policy shift to combat a weakening labor market, and Jerome Powell last month said that the time has come for policy to adjust. And adjust it did because today the Federal Reserve announced that the target federal funds rate will actually decrease by 0.5%, much more than expected. In today's video, we'll discuss exactly what's happening, what the rate cut will mean for the entire economy, including stocks, housing, as well as other interest-bearing accounts. We're going to talk about what that means for you because this policy shift can actually make a big difference in a lot of the financial decisions in your your life. I also want to say that I'm going to recap this video a little bit further in my free newsletter, which I will link down below. So make sure to sign up for that if you want to stay up to date as much as possible. So first, let's actually go over the fundamentals of what an interest rate cut is, because to understand the implications of a rate cut, you need to know what we're talking about. If for some reason you're already like a financial wizard and you already know what a rate cut is, which is probably a lot of you, you can feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter. But I'd argue that this section is still valuable for anybody watching, whether you're a financial wizard or a financial novice. When you hear the term rate cut, it's referring to the reduction of the federal funds rate. This is also known as the overnight rate because it's the short term rate that banks can borrow from the Federal Reserve's central bank. Now, in turn, this rate is going to be reflected, for example, in the loan interest rate that you might get from the bank for your small business or perhaps your mortgage. When interest rates are higher, borrowing money becomes more costly for the banks, so they in turn may charge a higher amount on their loans for their customers. And this theoretically should should discourage people like you or I to buy something while taking out a loan because it's going to be more costly in terms of paying back that loan with the increase in interest payments. Now, you have to understand that the federal funds rate is something that can be manipulated and actually changed by the Federal Reserve itself. And they will actually use this to their advantage and they will change their rates to help guide monetary policy in the United States. When the economy is, let's say, not doing so hot, they may lower interest rates to incentivize borrowing. Now, when the economy is thriving, it's a good thing, but sometimes too much of a good thing can cause prices to inflate. So the Federal Reserve has decided to raise interest rates in the past because they want to disincentivize borrowing or actually make it a little bit more painful to borrow money. Now, historically, because of the rampant inflation that we all experienced during COVID, the Federal Reserve decided to go through a rate hike cycle. They hiked their benchmark rate 11 times between March 2022 and July 2023. The idea was here, it's pretty simple as I alluded to earlier, higher rates equals tighter money. So that equals people spend less money and hopefully the prices of goods go down eventually. Now, that's exactly what they decided to do. And you can see that with this graph that the federal funds rate was virtually at zero from 2020 to 2022. And then all of a sudden it just shot up rather quickly during the aforementioned period of March 2022 to July 2023. Now, this entire year, there have been some rumblings that the federal funds rate would be reduced as inflation has cooled. But the Federal Reserve Committee, including Jerome Powell, has been cautious to not cut rates too quickly, stating that they needed to see consistent data month over month showing that inflation is indeed cooling down to a target level of around 2%. And this year, we've seen exactly that. Inflation is trending down towards 2%. Like I said in my intro, it's closer to 2.5% right now. And so the Federal Reserve has basically deemed that it's good enough to move toward a policy of cutting rates, at least for right now. All right, so that is a quick recap of what it means to cut rates. But now the question is, what can we actually expect to happen? Because that's probably why you clicked on this video. Historically, rate cuts are, quote, good for the markets. And many people believe that they send stock prices higher. But why is that? And what does the data actually say around how they perform? So let's actually first discuss the performance of stocks, bonds, and cash. So here's the analysis coming from Schroeder's. This shows you how well stocks, bonds, and cash do in terms of performance after the Fed starts to cut rates on average 12 months after the the Fed begins cutting rates. There are 22 line items here, and you can see that the majority of the time, the stock market is up in terms of returns 12 months after the Fed starts to cut rates. On average, it's up 11%, and that's pretty fascinating because basically when the Federal Reserve decides to cut rates, that means it, it's going to get cheaper to borrow money. And this cheapness of debt can actually benefit a lot of companies, such as the smaller and mid-cap companies or growth companies that leverage debt to help grow their business. If borrowing becomes cheaper, that means companies in general or people like you and I 
I might be more inclined to get some capital to help grow their business or perhaps just take out a loan. Of course, that doesn't happen right away. And just because the Fed cut rates today doesn't mean that these effects will be felt right away. Since the cost of borrowing only drops 0.25% or 0.5%, it's not going to be that significant in the short term, but it could mean a lot more in the long term. However, don't forget that stock market performance is often tied into future expectations. So if the market believes that more rates are to come, they might be pricing in those rate cuts ahead of time. And thus, that's why we can see on average the market returning so well before cuts even happen. All right, so what does this mean for you? If you are someone who is investing for a short to a medium term time horizon, you could actually use this data and try to play that game. You could allocate your capital ahead of rate cuts and try to swing trade your way into profit. Just know that profit isn't guaranteed. There's a really great article from the A Wealth of Common Sense blog, and that actually details how the Fed rate cuts will affect us, which I will link down below and full credit to the author, Ben Carlson. But he says that quote, the stock market cares about earnings. So the economy cooling off or remaining strong likely matters more than a couple of rate cuts by the Fed. And I tend to agree. So if you're more of the passive investor who is investing for retirement and the long game, which is basically the strategy that we cover on this channel in particular, it's likely that you probably aren't going to be doing much, but staying consistent with your dollar cost averaging into a broad index based type of fund. According to the article, rate cuts really matter for yields on your cash and cash like securities. When you see a drop in the federal funds rate, you will actually see a correlated drop on your T-bills, your CDs, your savings accounts, interest rates, etc. And a great example of this is with, let's say a high yield savings account. Currently, tons of places are paying 4.5 to 5% on your money just for holding your cash in a high yield savings account. But once the Federal Reserve cuts rates, it's likely that your yield percentage on your HYSA will probably move in lockstep downwards. And here's an example of what that will look like. So I personally use the Wealthfront High Yield Savings Account. And you can see that back in November 1st of 2019, when the Federal Reserve cut rates by 0.25%, that the email I received was that my cash account APY went down to 1.82% from 2.07% originally. And you will likely see this type of decrease in rates and these types of email notices that you will get for your own high yield savings accounts now that the Federal Reserve has cut rates. But does that mean you should completely abandon your high yield savings account or cash equivalent securities? Not exactly. Many people are more than happy to hold on to these investments if they're still yielding more than 4%. Now at 3%, things get a little closer and that you may want to change your allocation, but it just depends on what you're looking for as the investor. Now, another area that gets affected by the cut in the federal funds rate are actually mortgages. Mortgage rates should be reflected not only when the Fed cuts rates, but something that is often not talked about is that mortgage rates are often cut before the Fed even officially announces that they lower the rate. That's because the mortgage and bond markets are already anticipating the rate cut and those markets are operating in real time. And often the mortgage rates are already pricing in the future expected rate cut. And so those prices are affected immediately. This article from CBS a couple of months ago says, quote, at this point, there is 100% certainty that there will be at least a 25 basis point cut, which is currently reflected in mortgage rates. So sometimes you may even see the mortgage rates stay steady or even go up slightly after the Federal Reserve officially decides to cut rates, especially if the market was expecting a 25 basis point cut and all we got was a 25 basis point cut. Now, if the market gets surprised with a 50 basis point cut, then we could actually see mortgage rates coming down even more. Now, a home is an asset that is directly going to be influenced by your mortgage interest rate. And so, for example, if you have $3,000 a month to spend on a mortgage, you can technically afford a mortgage that is a $500,000 mortgage at a 6% interest rate. If rates go down to say 4%, that same $3,000 a month can actually now afford you a $630,000 mortgage. That means because the rate went down 2%, you can now afford $130,000 more of a mortgage than you could before. Now, a big fear that many people have is that when rates come down, people technically have more purchasing power, and so therefore home prices will just shoot up when rates are lower. However, that's not always the case. Oftentimes, home prices are dictated by what's going on in the economy, what's going on in your local market, housing inventory and supply, and how many new constructions are going up. A decrease in rates alone could increase home prices, but as always in personal finance, it doesn't mean that it will, and sometimes it just depends. I think one thing to pay attention to is that if you are looking to buy a house in the coming months or the year, to try to at least get the lowest mortgage rate possible and actually shop around for mortgage rates like you would 
would shop around for car insurance rates. For example, I learned recently that you don't have to just go to your biggest bank to get a mortgage like your Chase or your Wells Fargo, and oftentimes the lender that you're referred to by your realtor is just the one that they happen to work with, and that doesn't mean you have to go with them. You can always go to a mortgage broker, another bank, a credit union, and just ask them, hey, what's the lowest rate you can do for me and my mortgage? For example, wholesale mortgages usually have lower rates on average, but are only available through brokers. And ultimately, the mortgage rate you're offered has more to do with your credit score, your down payment, and your loan amount, etc. So you want to make sure you at least shop around for mortgage rates, especially when it comes to a 30 year long mortgage. If you're able to take a couple of extra hours or perhaps even just an extra day discovering more about the different types of rates that you can get, then it could actually save you a lot of money over that loan, especially on one of the bigger purchases of your life. Finally, let's talk about credit card debt because one place where lower interest rates might help the average American is that the interest rates on your credit card may start coming down ever so slightly. With total credit card debt at all time highs of $1.34 trillion and the Fed actually reporting that the average credit card interest rate is 22.76% as of Q2, that means current credit card interest rates are actually costing the average American a ton of money. According to census data, the average credit card balance is $8,674 for the average American in 2024. So let's use an $8,000 balance as an example. If you have that as your credit card balance, your payments and interest alone is $151 per month. If we're able to see, say, a 3% decrease in interest rate for credit cards, that could mean extra savings of about $21 in interest per month. Now that's gonna help a little bit, but it might not be significant enough, and that's even if credit card rates actually come down that much. So instead of trying to wait for relief from the Federal Reserve to lower rates and then hopefully lower your credit card interest, I think it's always just a good idea to try to clear as much credit card debt as you can as soon as possible. And I think there are a ton of ways to do that, including asking your card provider for a lower APR for a period of time, or many credit cards offer a 0% intro APR for between six to 21 months if you do what's called a balance transfer. That's where you transfer your credit card debt from one card to another. Interest rates do affect debt, but I think the impact of lower rates on housing and stocks and cash is probably greater. There's no doubt that there's plenty of uncertainty ahead, but I think that over time, if you're able to stay the course, stay consistent with investing, and also keep yourself updated with what's going on in the markets, your wealth will continue to grow. If you do wanna keep updated on the markets even further, you wanna check out my free newsletter called hump days down below and that's where we come out with business and market news twice per week on Wednesdays and Sundays. If you're interested on where your money should go whenever you get paid that's one of my favorite videos I've ever made on the channel and I will leave it linked right here so make sure to check that out or else I will see you in a future video. Thank you for being here. Peace.